Let's get it, try and get it working. Yes. That's like Fonzie. That's exactly what I thought. And there's a reference that would be lost on most of the audience. Oh, we've got two stations. Fantastic. So the business end is actually up here. All this is doing is amplifying stuff. We've got a station down there. Beach Boys. And, and that one? clash. London's calling. Oh, the, how perfect is that? So this is a London station. It's called Absolute. And this is all coming out of a penny. Tiny wire and a penny. And our penny is acting as a diode. Rectifying the signal and we are picking up a station called Absolute Radio all the way from London on a piece of wire hung out of my office, which is acting as an antenna. And actually, if we didn't have this and we had a pair of headphones, this thing would work with no power source. Phil, I thought you were like a high-powered physicist. What are you doing messing around with this? So it all goes back about, oh, um, how many years would it be? 41 years? 41 years to this book. This book was actually published in 1972, and this is where, for me, physics started. My uncle Benny was a radio amateur, really interested in shortwave radio and listening to shortwave radio and building antennas, getting better signals. He and I, when I was about 10, used this book to build something which is called a crystal radio. So we've got a coil, which is an inductor. We've got a capacitor which we can tune, so we can change the capacitance. A diode, which is something called a rectifier, which means it only lets current flow one way. And a pair of headphones, or indeed I used an earpiece exactly like this. It's what's called a piezoelectric or a crystal earpiece. Is this the actual book or this is a... This is, I really wish I had the actual book. Um, I suspect if I had the actual book, it wouldn't quite be in this good a quality. There's a whole new series of Ladybird books, by the way, that some of you might have seen, which are pretty good. The zombie apocalypse mindfulness, and best of all, the student. Lisa finds her revision timetable very tiring. That is because it starts at 1 a.m. when she can be sure daytime television has definitely finished. They're a spoof of these books. Now, I learned a lot. There was this one and this one and a whole host of other ones. Basically, you use a plank of wood and we weren't even as technical as putting screws in it. What you use instead are what I would call thumbtacks or drawing pins. And we just uh, press those into the board and we wedge the component leads underneath. So here, right, we have our coil, coil here, capacitor, which is this thing. I went down to our ever-friendly electronics workshop and said I'd like an old style vein capacitor because I want to recreate this. And they went, here you go, Phil. And then I hunted through a few of these to find one with the good capacitance and one that was actually working. What they used to do, and for example, these were also known, called, known as crystal radios, but they were also known as foxhole radios. And prisoners of war used to build them in the, in the Second World War. And they couldn't get their hands on something like this. So what the other thing you can do, instead of changing the capacitance and having a capacitance variable, you can change the inductance. And the way you do that is you have different, what are called taps on the coil. So instead of connecting the diode right at the end, you might connect it here or here or here or here. And that allows you to change the frequency that you're detecting. So when I initially built this, all those years ago, we used something which is called a silicon diode. The important thing with this is it only allows current to flow one way. And so instead of it sloshing back and forth like this, it's just allowing it to flow in one direction. And that's really, really important in terms of being able to detect the signal and to pull out the signal, to extract the signal, um, the music, the sound, the voice, from what's called the carrier wave, which is the radio wave itself. The radio wave itself is a combination of what's called a carrier wave, which is very high frequency, maybe a million times, going back and forth, maybe a million times a second. Electric field flipping back and forth um, at a megahertz. And of course, the audio signal is much, much lower than that. It's at tens of kilohertz. And so this, along with the other elements in the circuit, pulls out the audio, the music, the talk, whatever, from, from the overall radio wave. Phil, when you were a boy, you said that you used, you used one of them. Yeah. What have you done today? So what I've done today, this is amazing. I can't believe this actually works. So with a penny, in the UK at least, it's different in the US. So I've done my wiki homework on this. In the UK, what well, you have is stainless steel and it's coated with copper. But of course that copper oxidizes and this is a fairly badly oxidized. You can see even little patches of green stuff on this penny, if you look carefully. And the wonderful thing is just like silicon, copper oxide is something called a semiconductor. 
And so you, with this type of, of diode, what happens is you get two different types of, of silicon, one which is doped what's called N-type and another which is called doped P-type. The doping changes the conductivity and you sandwich those together. And the, when those two materials interact and mix to a certain extent, what happens is that you get a barrier for electrons to flow in one direction and not a barrier in the other direction. Now, wonderfully, you can also do the same thing with a metal on semiconductor contact, and it's called a Schottky diode. This is about the most rudimentary form of a Schottky diode one can imagine. It's called a cat's whisker in that we've got a wire touching very, very gently because we want to touch the oxide and we don't want to dig through to hit the copper or the steel underneath because then we'll short everything out. So we want to have a weak contact. So we've got this thing, in this wire, and it's acting almost like a spring. So it's so delicate, right, it's gone completely now. So we've got to try and recover it. This might involve quite a lot of swearing. No. And it goes again. And so this is what they used to do. Can you imagine being in the sort of trenches in your prison of war, just moving this thing around or so frustrated you want to have some sort of outside contact? What's happening when you hit the table? So this contact here is moving ever, ever so slightly. And so what I want to do is just jog it so it finds a nice spot on the penny where we get a good... Come on, you pig. Okay, so that's not great. So it depends very much on where you are on the penny. We can tune it a little bit. Not bad. This is on a penny. On a penny. When I first did this, I think I got more excited than when I did it as a 10 year old. Obviously there was a recent Nobel Prize and I was just reading this blog, which is in the dark by a guy called Peter Coles, but he's talking about the um, Princeton Press Conference for Jim Peebles. I'm sure you've done something on Jim Peebles recently, Brady. And there's this wonderful quote my, from Peebles. My advice is not to aim my advice is not to aim for prizes and awards. They will come or they won't. Don't judge your career by the number, by the count of prizes. We're in this for the joy of research, the fascination, the love of science. That is the reward, really. And honestly, when this thing worked last night, when I tried it for the first time, I was jumping around the room. Um, and I'm now quite a bit older than I was when I first made it, but still, it was still the same punching the air moment. Phil, we've done videos before about your real research. And one thing we always talk about is that tip of your microscope and how sensitive yes. it is and how yeah, you've yeah, got yeah. it. It reminds me yeah, of Exactly, that. but even better than that, Brady, even better, th oh, thank you for that wonderful unplanned segue. This is one of the silicon samples oh, yeah. from our STM. This is a sample, one, of, well, both, there were two samples there, both of which we've imaged with atomic resolution. And what I'm gonna do is take this and let's see if we can use one of these silicon samples, it should be easier than a penny, um, to actually detect the signal because we've got a semiconductor and we've got a metal. So okay, we'll take that out. I probably will never get it working again. Piece of silicon, this is gonna replace the penny. Okay, so I just have to adjust the... <laughs> on enough pressure so it sits under there, but not so much that it cracks. Just bear with me, this is always fiddly. Yes! Got it! Yes! That's what we'd expect. It's a better semiconductor than a crappy old penny, so we should expect a better signal. Physics works! So tune in our circuit, there's our signal. There's it gone, I think there's another one back here. Notice no attention paid to screening. This is about as Heath Robinson as it gets. So that's our signal, that's our ground, and I've just coupled them together. I wanted it to be as close as possible to what happened years ago. Yeah. Ah! There we go. Come on, radio, play us a song. I do. I right, just don't breathe, really. It's New Zealand, and right now it's absoluteradio.co.uk. Thank you, Absolute Radio, for being on exactly the right frequency, of course, because what you can do is you can work out what frequency you're detecting from the inductance here and the capacitance here. But um, I wish I'd planned it that much. You can see from the really higgledy-piggledy wiring, I didn't put a lot of effort into this. And it worked. Green 
did. Yay. So? It's a rock radio as well. I was very happy. Happy? Yeah, it's good, isn't it? Yeah, it's really good. good. We didn't stop here. You can hear even more from Phil, particularly on the topic of resonant frequency. Notice I'm not driving it. The amplitude stays the same. All I'm changing is the frequency. This is really important. There are links on screen and in the video description. And to see more videos, including plenty more from Phil, check out everything on our channel, 60 Symbols. Or we can do what we're doing here and we can listen to it. 